I've entitled this section the Youth Ministry Realities in Singapore Insights and Wisdom uh, from the Ground. Now, basically this report, it's the complementary section of um, this quantitative um, survey which was done. Um, this study was actually done online, you know, so the responses were all online. We didn't have to go around. So in fact, this was the first time any study done by One Hope was done online instead of getting people you know, to go visit churches and uh, speak to pastors, etc. So it was helpful because it was a lot uh, faster that way. But it was also problematic because we didn't get a chance to build relationships with people, uh, which I think is really, really important. Nonetheless, um, what we wanted to do is we wanted to do by the side a qualitative study uh, so that um, we could go and interview pastors and speak to them about the backstory behind uh, some of the findings. Um, and as a qualitative researcher, you know, you would say, oh God, please let the findings that you surface uh, complement and support what is uh, found in the, the other study, the main study, right? And gratefully, there were, there were quite a few complementary bits, um, and there were, a, a, you know, a, a little different sort of things that came out also, which was really good also, right? So what I'm trying to do today is I'm going to be presenting to you uh, the findings uh, which came out of this. Now, basically, there were six uh, there are six questions that I'm investigating, and of the six, uh, only four have been completed, uh, which is the reason why it's still in the draft form. I've identified uh, you know, the, the main ideas, but I've not written up the stuff because of just time commitments. Um, there were 14 leaders that were interviewed. Um, 16, oh, sorry, six of them were from churches, and eight of them from youth organizations. Um, this is one to one and a half uh, to two hours uh, interviews that we spent with them. And then I'm working on the responses to the six research questions, but today I will be reporting just very briefly on four of them. Okay. So the six uh, questions that we were asking were, what are the aspirations of youth ministries in Singapore? What are the strengths observed in youth ministries in Singapore? What are the weaknesses observed in youth ministries in Singapore? And what qualities are the most effective youth ministries in Singapore? What qualities do the most effective ministries in Singapore have in common? Uh, number five, what are the opportunities presented to youth ministries in Singapore? And the final question, what are the challenges presented to youth ministries in Singapore? Now, of these six, as I said, I'm only reporting four, the aspirations, the strengths, the weaknesses, and the challenges presented uh, to youth ministries. Now, if you follow the report, what I have here is um, the first question, which is, what are the aspirations uh, that, that they have. These are the four, and that's the nature of qualitative studies. Uh, I'm not reporting everything that people say were their aspirations. In qualitative study, what we try to do is we try to look for themes. So if a lot of people are saying the same thing, then I'm reporting it. So I'm not reporting, you know, like one person says this, another person says this, because that could be very unique to that specific ministry. So I'm looking for what people are saying in general, okay? So, um, they, um, in terms of aspirations, churches are aspiring to lead their young people towards experiencing the love of God. I mean, that came out quite distinctly. distinctively. Building community, evangelism, Christian discipleship, and then youth leadership development. That was spot on. Uh, I have not reported that in here by way of the specifics, the specific um, a, um, things that the pastors or the leaders said. Uh, the final report will have that. Uh, I took out, because of the detail, because it's too thick, I, I took out all, you know, for every one of these, uh, there's a whole lot of data uh, which supports the idea, but that's not found in this particular report. Now, in the second one, which is the strengths observed in youth ministries in Singapore, uh, this is what came out. Uh, organizing large-scale events is very consistent to what was reported, camps particularly, but not just camps, but also conferences. 
Um, incidentally, for those of you who are here because of children's ministry, Gwen will be reporting very briefly after that. I'm only reporting for youth for the moment, okay? Uh, so large-scale uh, programs and events, uh, involvement in music, worship, and other creative avenues, a ministry that also came up, um, not just one person, but several, uh, building foundations to preaching and Bible teaching, that was what, was obs uh, what leaders thought was a strength of churches, and then uh, building community and relationships. The third uh, research question, uh, what are the weaknesses observed in youth ministry? Too much focus given to events and programs. Now, you'll be able to figure out by reading that how we derived this particular theme, uh, which is much, too much focus given to events and programs, lacking relevance, um, lack of mentors, role models, and spiritual parents, that was another one that came out. Uh, and then failure to reach out to social cultural others, that was something also that came out. Okay? So it's not that it's only four things that was reported, but these are the four that were very common uh, which could be observed. Uh, the other one, which is the challenges presented, and they include youth ministry in an increasingly liberal and secularized uh, society. And you know, when you speak to pastors uh, enough times about these matters, you know, which is what we did, we interviewed pastors quite a bit, um, you can feel the passion and the pain uh, that some of the pastors, you know, as they're relating to you some of these stories, uh, you can just feel it with them. And in some sense, I cannot communicate that to you. Hopefully, as you read uh, the report, you will be able to feel uh, what's happening on the ground. Okay, so it's insights and also some of the wisdom points. Uh, weak faith foundations that, uh, sorry, uh, the impact and influence of media consumption, that was another big thing. So if you notice it, the, the first three are actually quite related. That, that's all, it becomes like a package, you know, and then weak faith foundations come together with that. Academic demands from school, very, very big. I think we all know that. Those of you in that kind of uh, youth ministry, you will know that. The state of the family was also something that was reported, was, that was of concern. And then discouragement and burnout amongst youth leaders. Uh, interestingly, I think if you look at the report, uh, not, every past, not every church has got a full-time youth leader. And it's, it's very interesting, well, that is the reality. We are also saying, that's our next generation, that's the future of the church. And somehow the rhetoric and the money and the support is just not there. There's a bit of an incongruence that we find over there. And I think that's something for us to really seriously think about, about you know, putting resources. I think there was only one or two churches that I, that I uh, interviewed, pastors from those traditions that said, you know, our church is 100% behind the youth ministry. And when you count the number of staff and the resources they put into those youth ministries, it is true. Uh, it's not just rhetoric anymore. I mean, those ministries that are thriving, a couple of them that we talked to, they really put the money where their mouth is. And it's not small money, okay? It's really, really, they put their money there. And then poor partnerships with parents, uh, that you can read inside the report. Just for bonus, I've not finished this yet. I'm still working on it. But the bonus is this. The opportunities, which is one of the research questions that we're looking at, uh, so far, the use of music and creative uh, arts and also schools ministries. I already finished writing that bit out. But the rest I'm detecting, the use of social media and new technologies, uh, new innovative ministry formats, um, sports ministry, uh, cafe ministries, change perspectives through travel and mission trips, um, reaching out to the poor in society, reaching out to the second and third generation Christians, prayer and fasting, partnerships and cooperation among youth leaders in the city. That, that really encouraged me. Some of these things in terms of opportunities, they really, really encouraged me. Because it's saying to me that, you know, churches are making effort and they are smelling out opportunities. They're not just letting it rest and allowing the, you know, all the, 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 the um, challenges overwhelm the churches. There are churches that are seriously innovative and they're doing something about that. And that gives me hope. That gives you hope. That gives all of us hope. It's also true and maybe that's true for some churches more than other churches, that leaders are beginning to talk to each other. 
uh, one of the things that you may have noticed that there are so many E names behind this project. There's Ethos, there's Ethos, there's this and that. Uh, and, and the great thing, and this was true in the JDOP too, what is true is that different body, national bodies and at a lower level, churches and denominations, churches are beginning to talk to each other. Church pastors, youth leaders are beginning to talk to each other and, and realizing that they cannot do it by themselves. So I'm really encouraged that that sort of movement is happening. And if, if uh, I'm going to get off the podium very soon, uh, but if there's anything that I could say to us and encourage us to do is let's talk to each other and let's work together towards uh, the cause that we all in our own churches desire uh, to have. Okay.